Hello and welcome. I'm Jessica Richard. I'm the chair of the English department, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you here tonight. I'm so glad to see such a great crowd here for an evening of sound, poetry, and music. Tonight is the inaugural event in a new annual series, a reading by a writer that we will honor every year as the Edwin G. Wilson Distinguished Artist. We're grateful to the A.E. Findlay Foundation for the gift that endowed this series so that every year in perpetuity, we can celebrate our beloved Ed Wilson with a presentation by a literary artist. I know a lot of you know Ed Wilson, but I'm gonna just briefly summarize a few of the bits of his life for you. Ed Wilson was born in North Carolina and graduated from Wake Forest, the old campus, in 1943. He earned master's and doctorate degrees from Harvard and then returned to Wake Forest to teach in the English department in 1951, where he remained a member of the faculty until his retirement in 1993. He held a range of administrative positions, including serving as provost from 1967 to 1990. Ed Wilson has been a champion of literature and especially poetry throughout his life at Wake Forest. His academic specialty is English poetry of the Romantic period, Wordsworth, Byron, Keats, etc. Generations of students have learned to love poetic language in his classes. He played a crucial role in the founding of the Wake Forest University Press, which is the premier publisher of Irish poetry in America. And he's renowned for his poetic recitations. I especially love the recordings I've heard of him reciting Emily Dickinson. Because Dr. Wilson taught decades of Wake Forest students how to hear and speak the music of poetry, we are especially excited to honor his legacy with this unique poetry and music performance tonight. The poet Rilke wrote, for poems are not, as people think, simply emotions, they are experiences. Tonight at Wake Forest and in every future performance by our annual Edwin G. Wilson Distinguished Artist, poetry and literature will be an experience. I want again to thank the A.E. Finley Foundation for making it possible for us to honor Dr. Wilson and to continue to bring the sounds of literature to Wake Forest for years to come. And I want to take this moment especially to express our gratitude and our love for Dr. Wilson a giant of the experience of literature at Wake Forest. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Um, it's wonderful to have all of you here and to welcome our esteemed guests tonight. Um, it is my honor to be introducing Nathaniel Mackey and the Our True Day Begun Soon Come Quartet whose members are Sandy Bloker, Vital Cherry, Jason Lentz, and Dorian Lee Perriott II. Thank you to the A.E. Finley Foundation for establishing the Edwin G. Wilson Distinguished Artist Series. Thank you as well to Jessica Richard and University Advancement for their roles in establishing this series in the English Department's Creative Writing Program. Thank you to Anna Willis in the English department for organizing so much of tonight's event. And thanks to each of you for coming again. Um, after the performance, please enjoy the reception and book signing in the lobby. If you are on campus tomorrow night, please consider attending a presentation by author Casey Lehman in the Byram Welcome Center at 6 p.m. And right now, um, I want to ask you to silence your cell phones. And as is customary for literary and music events, please plan on staying for the duration of the event, which will be an hour. Nathaniel Mackey, a renowned poet and theorist, is the Reynolds Price Professor of Creative Writing at Duke University after having taught for many years at the University of California, Santa Cruz. When I teach Mackey's visionary work and other contemporary writers in creative writing workshops, I am not only teaching the value of writing poetry, I am teaching how to get there how to forge and travel the many paths to poesis, to creating and making. In a world so marked by division and destruction, writing poetry or performing poesis by creating and making is an act of resistance, one that invites readers and listeners to resist too. 
Mackey's form of literary resistance draws significantly from African-American radical music and poetry and African culture and mythology in works of prose fiction, literary criticism, and poetry framed in part by the West African songs of the Andambulu, celebratory funeral rites in the Dogon cosmology. While Mackey's serialized books of poetry can be seen as interrelated narratives on, on an epic scale, a form of mythopoesis or the making of myth, they replace the often essentializing and authoritative storytelling of many conventional epics with more nuanced gestures that enact the delights and depths of the situational and the particular. Mackey's poetry, intimately connected to music and sound, are lyric other worlds of voyage and migration, elegy and critique, philosophy and investigation, ritual and sexuality. Departing from many of the conventions of mainstream storytelling and poetry, the narrators in Mackey's work are fluid subject positions, transmitting the dynamic hyperphysics of their environments, which in Mackey's poetry always includes language itself. As an African-American poet drawing from the interplay of West African cultural practices, the African diaspora, and African-American music and literary tradition, among many other sources of inspiration, Mackey is creating in part an American epic poem, or anti-epic, that disturbs white supremacy and its ongoing role in the body politic. In his 2016 talk, Breath and Precarity, the inaugural Robert Creeley Lecture in Poetry and Poetics at the 25-year celebration of the SUNY Buffalo Poetics Program, Mackey linked Creeley's famous essay on, po on poetics, Projective Verse, which emphasizes the centrality of breath in composing poetry with the tragic words, I can't breathe, repeated by Eric Garner, an African-American man who died after being restrained by police in 2016. 2014. Discussing the precarity of breath that is so part of poetry, precarity, Mackey said, has been and continues to be unequally distributed, some groups serving for others as a sacrifice to it or a shield against it. This powerful talk went on to be published in the 2018 books, book Poetics and Precarity, edited by Myung Mi Kim and Christian Miller, which I encourage you to seek out. Mackey is the author of six books of poetry, the most recent of which is Blue Fassa, published by New Directions, an ongoing prose work from a, bro a broken bottle traces of perfume still emanate, whose fifth and most recent volume is Late Arcade, published by New Directions, and two books of criticism, the most recent of which is Paracritical Hinge, Essays, Talks, Notes, and Interviews, published by the University of Iowa Press. He is the editor of the literary magazine Hambone and co-editor with Art Lang of the anthology Moments Notice, Jazz in Poetry and Prose, published by Coffee House Press. His many honors include the National Book Award for Poetry, the Stephen Henderson Award from the African American Literature and Cultural Society, a Guggenheim Fellowship, the Ruth Lilly Poetry Prize from the Poetry Foundation, the Bollingen Prize from American Poetry, from the Beinecke Library at Yale University, and the Rebecca Johnson Bobbitt National Poetry Prize from the Library of Congress. His work has been the subject of books and articles of literary criticism from numerous literary scholars and poet critics, including Joseph Donahue, who is here with us tonight from Duke. Tonight, Mackey will perform poems from Double Trio, an upcoming collection, accompanied by the Our True Day Begun Soon Come Quartet, whose members I am now pleased to introduce. Sandy Blocker is a multi-instrumentalist, educator, and percussion instrument repair specialist. His main focus is on percussion from around the world. A former adjunct professor at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro teaching West African drumming and a former professional ballet dancer teaching at a local studio, he currently accompanies dance classes including ballet, modern West African, and Korean folk dance at Elon University. Sandy has performed from the Lincoln Center to weddings in Mali, from street, st street dances in Guinea to the streets of Amsterdam, universities in the U.S., and backyard parties. 
Chicago-born bassist and composer Vital Cherry has over 30 years of experience as a performer, touring and recording with such artists as Cecil Taylor, Charles Gale, Brother Ah, David Murray, Don John Tatachi, and David Pleasant. In 2002, he was awarded Best Jazz Musician by the Baltimore City Paper. He currently lives in Burlington and leads the Triangle Afrobeat Orchestra. New Jersey-born multi-instrumentalist, arranger, and instrument repair technician Dorian Perriot II has over 35 years of experience as a performer and is a retired 30-year educator. He has toured and recorded with jazz and rock artists such as Henry Threadgill, Russell Gunn, David Murray, rocker Glenn Burtnick, Howard Johnson's Gravity, Tommy Jones, Gloria Gaynor, and performed with the Miles Davis, Gil Evans Ensemble. He once played for the King of Morocco in Morocco. He has proudly received three Teacher of the Year awards in two different school systems and an honorable mention for the state of New Jersey in 2000. He lives in Clemens and performs with the Triangle Afrobeat Orchestra. Jason Lentz was involved in music from an early age, beginning at nine years old as a performing vocalist and continuing as an orchestral string player on violin and double bass, and finally on guitar in his teens and 20s. Lentz acquired his first oud in 1997 and has continued to pursue studies in Middle Eastern maqam music since that time. After over the past 22 years, he has studied music from Egyptian, Arabian, Turkish, Afghan, Iraqi, Lebanese, and Syrian traditions, including classical, folk, and Sufi music repertoires. He has worked with percussionist Sandy Blocker in all of these musical traditions during that time. Today, Lentz continues to play oud music from these traditions and plays guitar with influences from West and North African styles. He lives with his family in Chapel Hill. The collaboration between Mackey and the Our True Day Begun Soon Come Quartet was first realized at Duke University last year in a three-day national conference on Mackey's work. I am so thrilled that they accepted our invitation to perform again together tonight. Please join me in a warm welcome for Nathaniel Mackey and the Our True Day Begun Soon Come Quartet. Thank you, Amy, for that very warm introduction, and thank you as well for the warm invitation to be here. We're going to uh, get right down to it, and um, with only a few prefatory words, um, we're going to perform a, a set or a suite of six poems from the forthcoming book double trio that Amy mentioned, and we're going to do them as a continuous set. And we called the performance after the top subtitle of three of the poems, School of Oud, which is that, the, uh, an the ancestor of the Western lute. The Western lute has frets on it. The Oud does not. And um, you may notice in the poems that the fretlessness of the Oud was something I could not get over. Come run, come. Question came in. 
Why board a boat not meant to last, we were asking. Why put us in one? Bodily fraud, bodily forfeiture. A lost or a last leg's twitch. Lost, longish tooth put under a pillow. Inside my mouth, the words beautiful youth again. No helping it yet. Ragtag endearment come back from back when. Flawed beauties, flaw what beauty there was, made up or made up for. I played a fretless lute the less I knew. I woke up to money left under my pillow, Scheherazade's perfume. Flawed beauties, flaw, funded tale after tale, night's new day dispatch. I played a fretless lute the less I thought about it. Mouth that moved my mouth, a speaking mouth. Tale as much as teller, and to be of that estate. Tale as much as tale, the what say are quipped. What tet, spawn mo, would be. So sang the singer I sang on. So said the song. What said ventriloquy, adorning the book of so. Loot no less fretless, the more involved it got. The more I played, the more slip, the more slide it got. I played a fretless loot, the less grip I gave it. Meaning to say, the loot had a friend, but not say it. Torn away tooth, gone away with the sun. I put a straw beneath my pillow. The wisp it all had been to be said by that to have been a straw. Magical chance, magical transfer, magical pick I played at making. All the more so, the more thought I gave to it. No matter I played a flet fretless lute, the less I thought. I played it with, a straw that was my lady's eye tooth, the pick the sun's light hitting it when she smiled. It made me say more than I knew, maybe no more than I knew. I played a fretless lute, the more I worried what I knew, the more no was what note was, not its string what counted most. I made keeping it unreal as real as I could, my lady's tooth gone in dimbu, a grudge I kept coughing up. Something caught in my throat, no longer beautiful youth. Beautiful youth, I sang even so. No moment, it turned out, not stolen, so doomed we were. No matter my fretless loot said no. I played a fretless lute to say a torn away tooth turned into gold, coughed up antipathy, a chill come over the strings, a rasp caught crawling my throat. I sang my lady's beauty's flaw, her chipped front tooth, edge I'd run my tongue on when we kissed. The more I played, I played a steal away lute, my lady's tooth cut my tongue, it bled, fretless. A song of lost repair, I say, lost reparation. Why board a boat not meant to last, I was asking. Body not meant to last and not lasting. 
a chipped front tooth, nothing at all. A fretless lute it was I played, and a fretless lute that I asked it with. A fretless lute, not wanting to know, I did my asking with. it no chorusing horns had my back had I wavered had it been other than a fretless lute I plucked it wasn't Gasira's lute I plucked we were friends no blood had to be fetid fretless almost unshrunk so monastic it waxed wan reach and regard a kind of theremin effect tonic weave the withholding of touch in some way Pink, rarefied lights, indigent blush. Thank you. 
wondering what Wood would say, what Wood would say, wanting some unsayable something, a deep say prior to say, before say's concession. What would Wood say, I was wondering, Wood so fretless my fingers fell away, a something sound seemed as much the matter of, if say it, synesthetic charger. sound of yore I knew and loved, dilational tone and buzz, burr, bite. We played ignoring the line between anywhere and somewhere. Non-cosmicity gave ground, seeded the way as we had our way. Meant to charm snakes it might have been, so open-throated I dreamt I bled. Next I knew Leroy Jenkins joined us. Going hard, but going nowhere. A utopic nowhere run. We played keeping history at bay. For it was history was what we played. No matter, I sat in a cage. We played on the line, joining anywhere, somewhere. Played away the border between. I was in the school of Ood again. The abandoned boy wanting nubs crayfish. Fretless play, all I could eat.
hookah. We played in a cage, made to pledge allegiance. We were feeling happenstance's hand on our shoulders, the wee wee bee. We had taken a real trip, train was heard to say, on a real ship. No matter real seemed up in the air. The realty presses way with fact what the matter was. We blew with soup cooler of plum, unexcelled. Why the big, why the bent neck, I wondered, looking at my mood. Was there just a record on the box I played along with, I wondered, fighting back toe cramps, keeping time with my foot. I wasn't fretless like before. The weave went on without me, or with me but ragged. Train and Leroy said it was okay. Why the bent neck, I went on wondering. sat holding. I was exactly an orphan now. Sad cage they were calling freedom. Cage we shed it in. Empathetic Leroy, empathetic train at the border, an empathetic serenade it seemed. I played with an awkwardness they said was true, an apt inability to advance, Leroy called it student of going nowhere that he was. We were of another we, he told me, subject to summary slaughter, each in a mirror of nothingness and underness lighting our way. Better my axe's neck than mine, I was thinking. The muse's hard look, not unbeknown to me. Bent necks were many, I finally saw, I wanted to say. Wrung necks of the lynched and of the otherwise disappeared. I hung my head the longer I played. Neck bent a la Picasso, goosenecked. Blue noose, blue gnosis. Blue impromptu, the truth was.
no matter what else, I need it, like Wayne said, not to think about music. I called on thoughts of the hair within my lady's love region, a koan of sorts, her ladyship such as it was, nothing less likely there. I feasted on paradox of a mind for what was not, wide-eyed for what would not be seen, a late lesson in notness grown motivic, a school of dilation again. it no longer was, was me and my ood's dream of success. Ovoid back, more belly than back, not not to mention its rhyme with jelly. A mystic remit we tested our teeth with, magical briar, breath. were on deck as we docked in the nerve church. Metaphoric boat of soul metamorphic. Boat shaped back of the ood whose belly we rode in. Etymologic boat of soul catastrophic. Church whose nave we were in. Church casting color cast a stain on the world. 
It bore the bright light we'd been through, gone round and come through again. Metamorphic boat of soul, metaphoric. Of what? No one would say. Whatever it was, was what soul was, of which only the asker wanted to know. All hands were on deck, even so. All had gone well where it only body nerve church meant. Well where it only soul it meant. Well where it not a thread of the two, other than either a thread and a third off to itself. All had gone well that way. Would have gone well were it that way. Way that it wasn't. Would that it were. We lay held in the ood whose belly was black, all hands on deck as we docked. Bent neck and bent knee, de rigueur in the nerve church, conundrum the head it hit. Meat and bone apart from meat and bone was the nerve church. Soul unbeknown to itself it also was. A certain something, not something, notwithstanding. Asked about, no matter, no answer would accrue. All hands were on deck proclaiming soul. Soul not something to be said, to be had. Soul that was a boat, and that sat in the boat it was. Born, but known to itself. All hands were on deck not proclaiming soul. The less we boasted, the better we rode the boat that soul was. The boat that sold us, thought to be that boat. insides, a madrigal of sorts, its back less back than belly. Some were said to have bent back while surrounded by singers, bent back so far their heads were on the floor. The backs of their heads were on the floor, it was said, brushed it. The back of the head, a belly, digesting damage. No way, its way. Away. Some were said, once on deck, to have jumped, a shark's teeth, or breathlessness the way, no way, was theirs, jumped, some said, or were thrown. We knew all this coming into the nerve church, its nave encyclopedic, no outrage not written down, history, a parable of nerve, who had it. as well have been, so metaphoric and metamorphic 
the dark whence we embarked. It was nothing if not Eleanor's dream. The ship we were in, loot of the light lady of night, Eleanor's loot we surmised. Not since primordial beak met primordial seed had it so accrued. No mile not haunted, no matter what move we made. Our bus putt-putted along. sea of green, Huff insisted we call it. The bus, our boat, and all of it the nerve church. Nothing not inflected by the blood-guzzling loot whose intestines history was. Wagadu lay within sight even so. It or the eleven light city. Eleanor sitting behind the driver's seat, whispering things in Huff's ear. Eleanor and Huff We'd have never thought, but there it was. Huff under Eleanor's influence. Eleanor under his. A boat their bed would be, we heard him whisper back. His and her wish, as much ours as theirs, that history give way to romance, what lit the nerve church. Our bus bumped along, vestiges of memory afoot. To breathe the boat of soul grew laden with the loot our boat also was claiming blood. The school of Oud instructed us, taught with drawn strings, taught cartilage and sinew, also known as nerve church, our tutorial wherein we saw, with no time soon recess. Eleanor's face, which had floated many a boat, now floated huffs that came clear for us to see. Nerve church, whose nave we docked in, nuptial perhaps, our notional romance calling history moot, such the way we got by. Such the way we got by proved every day by soul music, Brother B said, peaches and herbs come on the box. A metaphoric love boat, the metamorphic boat of soul turned into now. We were on our way, who knew where? Bus, boat, train, or truck. On our way, wherever, soon come. inside the nerve church, the lute's underbelly, the ood, the madrix underbelly, the panther, the dex underbelly, the hold, metaphoric, metamorphic souls underbelly foreboding. We were far from low forest now, far from lone coast, on a train from Barcelona to Lyon. Eleanor slept lying across the seat across from Itamar, her head on Huff's lap. Her small feet peeped out beautifully from under the blanket she lay wrapped up in. The train was a boat, or it would take us to a boat, unclear which. The boat of soul that lay docked in the nerve church, all hands on deck awaiting us, if not, according to some, none other than us. It was night, 
nothing visible outside our windows. The commiserative dead gauged our quotient of soul. No one able to say what it was, though we rode it. The riding alone was clear. The train ran away with us, took us away. Soul riding us at sea, warm and humid with the breath and the breathing of bodies. A blind winding or a boat finding its way through the night. There was no way to know it, but by its effects, Itamar was saying, an array of aromas we took to pertain thereto, pervading our car. sky, never not inflected by the dead on the seafloor, the dead under leaf, needle and cone in low forest, the dead and how they came to be that way everywhere. They spoke of this as the bus rattled on, the boat cut through water, the truck struggled going up a mountain, the train cried orchestral, soul bumped again and again against what would not have it. Eleanor and Huff served as a marker, their conjuncture an imaginal sound no sound could make. It was an unkept, unkeepable promise, an unkeepable secret as well, the sound of words on a page. We had gone wordless at the apprentice press's antics, albeit much deeper was what was hitting the fan. The top was only the tip, no matter how wide it spread. We worked hard, remembering that. Nub gone into nerve, wide eyed where it was going. Nub's collapse into nerve, the one third wanted. A line crossed, the cross is burned again. Words had held forth in the nerve church, and they held forth now, held forth again. Words on the tips of our tongues, and on the tips of other tongues. Other tongues on the tips of our tongues. The imaginal sound, no sound could match, kept at us. Nerve the noise despite which we took our stab at living. Hate afoot, nothing new. Nub stubs its toe from time to time, we knew. Maybe all the time. Let's call it stub, it Tamar let out, wording up. We put some music from Zanzibar on the box, but took it off, took it off. not enough food. We were the school of Ud, school of Udra, 
the fools it took to learn anything but the money was. Con amor, todo se puede, we said. Semi said, semi sang. We each felt an ood's back or belly against our abdomen. Could each feel it verging on ribcage theater. Our vehicular ambiguity bothered us not at all. The dead rode with us, never not there, just as we, when dead, would never not be there. The dead's legendary thirst was the imaginal sound no sound could match. Synesthetic, the best we could do trying to speak of it, the sound we driven by. The dead's legendary thirst made us better ones. Lips chapped, no matter the green of low forest, the beloved's lips likewise dry. Otherwise we were silent, true Pythagoreans, as if we'd been asked about the square root of two. 65 times two to the second, all we'd say about number, be under or inside more what it was than say. It was song, 65 times four, we were in or were under. Bent, tautological figure, self-reflex, number, the letter it was. So it was we kissed like we were thirsty when we did. Incendiary, no matter it was. Tongue, a jet of flame, no matter. We wanted to be fools and stub. Where not to be was to prey on the world. Ellen Warren Huff had faded back into the we we be, absorbed, reabsorbed, back to as they'd been before. The literalness of number, never more irrelevant, a feeling for the none what obtained. They knew a philosophical readiness riding the curve of the belly or back, the boat of soul we thought it was. A feeling for the none, no one in love, nerve, stub wanted to know it was running from. We sought what solace there was, looking out at the varieties of green to be seen in low forest. side of the road. See them as musicians, Aja remarked, looking out her window. See them as playing the oud, the way their beaks pull at the carcass, a music we can see but not hear. We indeed did see the none of it, buzzard beaks, a barrage of plectrum, ligament and sinew, the strings plucked and picked. The buzzards were hands and fingers whose play grew, grew labored. A divine or demonic vehemence made a music we almost heard. Hawks rendering the sky another prayed lake, low forest a kind of heaven, even so. Side of the road. The 
putrid music Aja made us imagine was not the imaginal sound. A ribcage harmonics attended it all. So sad we laughed in self-defense. An allegorical cast we thought it might get. Events of which we were the terms, the meaning, each an attribute's embodiment, albeit none of us could say exactly which. An insensate chill came over everything, hot, humid day though it was. The deer's rib cage chimed a comedic air, divine comedic air. Never had low forest resounded so. We bumped along, happy to have air to breathe, the green leaves doing their job, lungs for a time healthy, all of us eventually none. Scraps of memory rode what breeze there was, chill sonority, real but abstract. Scraps of melody they might have been as well, were we to hear it yet. We put live at the village vanguard again on. Pharaoh's gruff butterfly brought us back. We were back among the big trees. We were back on Lone Coast. We were hearing with the hearing inside our heads and anywhere else. It got heavy holding the world in our heads, our bus, our boat. Our bus was a boat of longing, watery as the sea we were on. of the roots undergirding low forest. The all so much that none, it shook us. Watery ligament, cartilage, muscle, bone, skin. Andrianette's ex's pea coat floated above her. She led our surfacing back, lower back and buttocks, pear-shaped, bodily allure, low-hanging fruit. Sophia reached and the rest of us followed suit, reached and went on reaching. Mer people, we were not, but might have been. It was the wateriness of a kiss and much more, a kind of drowning, the what if and the what as if again, ongoing. Words on the tips of our tongues and the tips of other tongues, other tongues on the tips of our tongues, the tip of the beloved's tongue, all there was, all there ever was, anyway. Gnosis, none of us could say. We lay in a ditch after the bus rolled over, it seemed. Not all was well in the world of tone, but the imaginal sound surfeit got us through. The underwater sense persisted, floating garments, a kind of canopy, blocking the sun. The bounty of limbs and torsos, all incumbency. Our heaven had been on earth, as had our hell. The sunken boat our bus had become was my body, I felt. Radiated muscle gone fibrotic in my hip and thigh. The boon bodies were remained evident no matter. A kind of self-evident, such the matter only with mine. What light came through showed backs, lower backs and buttocks I was made helpless by. An otherwise invisible order I heard or I had heard word of. What one saw, one saw refracted. Light bent at an angle, a kind of lever. Leverage what one needed, get it by. We were back in the school of Oud, was all it was. The Oud's back the hull of a ship. 
thus the beloved's lips tutorial all only so much accruing to the nun a nonce or an anodyne delivery rescue what proffer again a proxy god we gave the name go head had our backs wayfare forever though we might or most likely would it was all one to us whether one or the other womanly or manly allure throughout the premises waters returned to itself we had gone back to primary form form assuming the shape of its retention when and were there such each every and all that or it was all in my mind or mostly brown versus bardo again a dream such as the frog dream a dream or drifting off all the green gone blue before I knew it. The truth was our bus remained upright and we whizzed along. 15501 and 101, lone coast and low forest, the ride, I wanted to say, of my life. All was accruing to the nun as we rode, the school of the ood's back, our school of the rot belly, Eleanor and Puff, a grade or degree thereof, Ever not without a sexual aspect, wetness and waft where their legs met, we the would-be fools it took to learn. A school of the duck's back, it also was. Loves or the beloved's tutelage, not to be lost. Waters first rolling away a dare to behold, all only so much bluff. We were of the order of the dry feather. Don't care accolades. Tear it up, we were time and again heard to say. Not since, I wanted to say, but not since what wasn't evident yet. Tree after tree went by outside my window, green back to green again. Not since Andrianette's maidenly look, wearing a pea coat, came out at last. Muse or Madonna come into the counterpoint with the car carcass on the side of the road, the Muse or Madonna thumbing a ride. There was something it wanted to say about ride, or to say using ride, something like we'd ride out the wretchedness of Nur, something like we'd survive, that go ahead don't like ugly for long. It had to do with the call or a calm come from beyond or behind visible extent, it wanted to say keeping, it wanted to say keep speaking through love's irrelevant lips, to and with the beloved's irrelevant tongue, to and upon the tip of the beloved's tongue. It was saying late love saw one through, would see us through. It spoke of repossession by spirals, a late word for spirit. It said having to do with a late word too. We rode along, riding along. We gazed out our windows. We looked out at low forest, so much of which we could not see. exit a kind of incline. The boat of longing lifted our hands up over our heads. The clothes we wore stripped away, floating above us. Naked as jaybirds, the voiceover said. It felt good to be birds again. Our dream was to be longer with our strained ekphrastic state. The scene, so digested, imaginal sound upended heaven. Carcass reverb, audited for days. It was extolling the muse memory could be, the bits of it riding the breeze, a distended epic, dislocated this, dislocated that, ramified forever. No such it as only was or once.